Okay, you have made your polymer clay piece, you have baked it, and now it's time to decide what to do to the surface. Now it's possible that you just want to leave it as it is. Um, sometimes the surface just doesn't need anything, it's great as it comes out of the oven. Other times you want either to smooth out a surface or you want to give it some kind of gloss. Sometimes you need to protect it, uh, like if it's, if it's you know, going to take a lot of abuse, you might want to put a protective coating on it. So um, the main two things you can do are either glaze it with some type of acrylic uh, coating. Several are made by clay companies. Sculpey makes a satin and a gloss right here. Um, this you just would put on with a paintbrush. But there's some other uh, great ones, Future Floor Wax or any acrylic floor wax is a great alternative to buying these expensive little bottles. Uh, it gives a nice shiny coat, it protects it from, you know, whatever, it might, you know, if it's gonna get abused or <laughs> used a lot, this will be a great protection. When you glaze something, you basically, if it, especially if it's like a little bead or something, you're gonna get your hands all goopy. So what I usually do is I will put it on a toothpick and then I'll just put a little bit of future in a cup and actually glaze it, you know, paint it with a paintbrush. Just a very light coat and it's, it's kind of runny so um, you don't need a whole lot. And then what I do, because what am I going to do with this if I'm doing a lot of beads, you get a piece of styrofoam and I stick it in there. If you have a thicker bead, you can put a skewer in there and then uh, they'll dry and you won't have to get as goopy as you might <laughs> by holding it in your hands. So that's one option. Uh, another great thing is uh, uh, polyurethane, a, a common brand. It used to be called Flectoverethane, but uh, it's now made by Rust-Oleum. So you might want to go to a hardware store and look for Rust-Oleum Diamond Verethane. It's a great finish for this kind of thing. It's like, like future. What you don't want is you do not want uh, like a spray aerosol, like a Krylon clear spray there's a chemical in there that will react with the clay and it will never really dry. It'll remain sticky. So that's, you do want to, if you aren't positive, you want to test it on a piece first. The other thing that could get you in trouble is you might think, oh, clear nail polish. Well, there's different types of nail polish. You do not want to use an enamel. It will not dry. It'll remain sticky. If you find a clear acrylic, that should work because like, like the floor wax and other things, an acrylic should work. But be real careful that you don't use a spray and you don't use uh, an enamel nail polish to cover your bead. So that'll give a nice shiny coat and it'll protect whatever you need to protect. But if you want a more uh, subtle uh, coat, or you don't actually want to glaze it, but you do want to finish it more, or if you want to kind of get some of these lumps or bumps out of here, then you might want to sand it and you will want to um, invest in several grades of sandpaper. Usually, if you've got a lot of major work to do, you could go down to like a 300 and to actually reshape a bead, but in general, you, that's gonna scratch up your clay, so you don't really wanna start that course. Um, a 400 is a good uh, number to start at. You wanna get wet, dry sandpaper. Um, and you want it starting at 400 and going up, you can go up as high as 2,000 grit. Usually you'll have to get these in an auto supply store. Here's your auto. Um, uh, it, th something this high isn't necessarily gonna be at a hardware store, it's gonna be more at an auto supply store. So you're gonna get a selection of, of grits. And 400 is a good one to start with. It, it um, kind of breaks the surface tension, the natural surface tension of, of the clay. And so, um, it'll, it'll just get the process started. You always want to use wet dry. Don't ever just dr do it dry and inhale the fumes. If you're going to do anything silly like that, make sure you're using a mask so you don't inhale any dust particles from this clay. But you always want to keep both the bead or whatever you're sanding and the paper wet. I like to set up different stations um, for each different grit. We'll talk about that in a minute, but first let's just see. It doesn't take a whole lot of, of effort. It, um, you just want to do the sides, you want to do the surface, rub it in circles. You just want to make sure that you are actually, well you can tell, especially with this color, that, that there is stuff coming off. It is, it is doing its job in sanding. You want to make sure you get all the surfaces. 
But again, you don't have to spend forever on it because we have a whole lot more sandpapers to go through. This is just kind of getting it started. Rinse it frequently because once it's kind of built up in there, that won't sand effectively anymore. So we'll just give another little rub here. And I think I hit everything. Now, on the back of a large sheet of sandpaper, it'll periodically say what grid it is. So it'll say 400, 600. If you happen to take off a piece that doesn't have that on, please label it with a permanent marker because you don't want to go through this whole process and then pick up what you think is 1,200 and have it be 600 because then you're going to undo all the work you already did. So if you label all your paper with a permanent marker, hopefully you won't make that mistake. 